A controversial result. Evaluating football players based on how their team performs is better than evaluating football players based on the actions they take during a match. Sounds intriguing? Keep on watching! Welcome to Football Player Ratings, where we discuss how to evaluate football players using data and mathematical models. My name is Lars Magnus, and in this video we will talk about a study that compared top-down ratings and bottom-up ratings for football players. To set the scene, let us first define what we mean by this. Top-down ratings are ratings such as plus-minus ratings, where the players are evaluated based on observing only how their team performs. The credit or blame for the team performance is then somehow distributed onto the players involved for the team. Bottom-up ratings are more data-intensive and require us to know all the individual actions performed by players during matches. We assign a value to all of the actions and the evaluation of players is then based on the values of the actions that each player makes. As bottom-up ratings make use of more data, we should expect them to be more reliable and basically better at separating good players from bad players. In a paper published in 2021, Gary Gallade and yours truly studied a bottom-up rating and a top-down rating and tried to evaluate them in terms of their reliability and their validity. In particular, we examined a top-down rating based on the concept of plus-minus that was published earlier and that we have covered in some detail in a previous video on this channel. As a bottom-up rating, we chose the VAPE rating, Valuing Actions by Estimating Probabilities, which was presented in 2019. To test the ratings, we used a dataset consisting of eight seasons of matches from the Big Five leagues. We have access to a lot more data for calculating top-down ratings, but for bottom-up ratings we need details about on-the-ball events, and this put some restrictions on the data available to us. While we refer to other videos on this channel for more information on the top-down plus-minus ratings, this slide summarizes the idea of the bottom-up VAPE ratings. First, the rating of a player is the sum of values from individual contributions, VAI, adjusted per 90 minutes of playing time. The value of an individual contribution, or action, is calculated by looking at the change in scoring probabilities, minus the change in conceding probabilities, that occurs as a result of the action. To calculate this, we need to first estimate the probability of scoring and the probability of conceding given a game state SI. A game state consists of information about the previous three actions, and each action is described by a set of up to 21 features. We re-implemented the VAPE ourselves, and so we made some very minor adjustments to the feature list compared to the original VAPE. You may also wish to check out the original paper on VAPE to have a better explanation for its underlying ideas. One slight adjustment we made for calculating the final rating of a player is to introduce a parameter big M so that players with very few minutes played do not get excessively large or small ratings. Past work on vape ratings had simply used a hard cutoff and ignored players with few minutes altogether. We first tried to verify that our vape calculations were consistent with previous implementations of the method. Our source of data was different and led to a slightly different distribution of types of actions. However, the frequencies were mostly in line with what was reported for similar datasets in the past. We also replicated the calculations for one particular series of events in a match between Barcelona and Real Madrid from 2017, and did not spot any major issues when comparing this to previous calculations for the same example sequence. The VAPE ratings assigns most of the credit for the goal to the final shot. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unpleasant moment, you know, right now, and for the fans it's no easy to take. So, um, well, you have to be professional, you know, you're playing a very big game. Here's Messi, and it's 3-0 oh. to football. You used the word pragmatic, uh, I think correctly earlier, uh, Mitchell, it is pragmatic. And um, there's also that idea that you beat them 2-0 and they say, yeah, fair enough. 
Another figure that we reproduced from the original vape article was about the most valuable players in the 2017-2018 season of the English Premier League. Again, our results are in line with the original results. When we evaluate different versions of our plus minus ratings, we like to do this along two axes. For the reliability of ratings, we split the dataset randomly into two parts, calculate ratings separately for each part, and then find the correlation coefficient between the ratings in the two parts. Repeated several times, the average correlation coefficient gives us an indication of the reliability of the ratings. If players are similarly ranked, independent of the exact data used to rank them, the correlation is close to 1, which is good, while random ratings, here used as a benchmark, are totally uncorrelated. For the validity of ratings, we consider that good player ratings should enable us to more accurately predict the outcomes of matches based on the ratings of the players involved. We thus use a model to predict match outcomes based on the difference in average ratings for the players in the starting lineups of the teams involved. Better ratings should lead to better predictions, in which case the loss of predictions is smaller. For predicting match outcomes, we first use six seasons to bootstrap play ratings. Then we use two seasons to train the prediction model. And finally, we use two seasons to make predictions that are evaluated using statistical loss functions. We can now compare the performance of the vape ratings and the plus minus or PM ratings. And in this figure, two variants of the plus minus ratings where information about event data is included. For vape, we tested different values of the big M. With small values of the big M, the resulting ratings are really bad, not reliable and not good predictions, as the ratings of players with few units played are too noisy. Increasing the big M reduces the issue with noise based on few units played and gives gradually more reliable ratings, but their validity is still relatively poor. They do not generate very good match outcome predictions. We can look at the match predictions using two different loss functions, but the results are the same. Plus minus leads to better predictions than vape. Also, combining PM and vape does not help much compared to just using PM. This is in contrast to a previous study that we have talked about, where we improved predictions from plus minus ratings by combining them with ELO ratings for the team as a whole. When it comes to just listing the highest rated players, however, the vape seems to be somewhat reasonable. It has Messi and Mbappé higher up than the plus-minus ratings, for example. But you can look at this comparison yourself to determine which one of these two top 20 lists made more sense, considering they were based on results up to and including July 2019. When we started the research presented here, we thought that vape ratings would be better than plus-minus ratings, but that perhaps plus-minus ratings could be improved by including more data which is a reasonable aspect to test, given that it is easier to obtain the match sheet data required for the calculations of plus-minus ratings. This table shows how the quality of predictions for the same set of matches as before changes when ratings are calculated based on various extended datasets. A bit surprisingly, the predictions are more or less equally good, even if we are adding more data. Since plus minus already performs better than vape for our original dataset, we thus instead tried to make the opposite test. What if we remove data? How little data do we have to keep for plus minus ratings to still be better than vape ratings? And then we found that even if we remove almost all training data, the plus minus ratings are still more reliable and have a higher validity than the bottom up ratings. Quite surprising, really. Part of why this was surprising to me was that some years earlier I had co-supervised some master students that had created the bottom-up ratings themselves, using data from the Norwegian top division. The principles behind these bottom-up ratings were quite similar to those of VAPE. And using these bottom-up ratings, the students found that predictions from the best bottom-up ratings were actually slightly better than predictions based on odds from the betting market. And trust me, the predictions from plus-minus ratings are not as good as the predictions in the betting market. So before making this study, I really thought that vape would be a lot better, and that plus-minus could only compete when being allowed to use data from a lot more matches than the vape. 
So what led to these surprising results? Perhaps there are some potential explanations that can help us to provide better ratings still. For one, Vape has the advantage that it can produce meaningful player ratings from a single match. Plus minus ratings do not make sense at all when looking at a single match in isolation. However, as this XKCD comic illustrates, just because we can produce numbers, it does not mean that these numbers can be used without caution. I believe one drawback of bottom-up ratings, as we see them today, is that they fail to compensate for the quality of teammates and opponents. Even after a whole season, or even several seasons, it seems that those ratings are not good at differentiating between players on different teams. Opposite, the plus-minus ratings may be very good at differentiating between players on different teams, but perhaps not equally good at differentiating between players on the same team. That is, a bad player on a good team can more easily get a good plus-minus rating than it can get a good vape rating. So I guess if I had access to event data and I was asked to create better bottom-up ratings, I would find a way to compensate for the difference in quality between teams. Then I think there should be a more even playing field and perhaps bottom-up ratings would outperform plus-minus ratings as they really should. Was this result surprising to you? Did you also expect that the bottom-up ratings should simply be better than the top-down ratings? Do you think that the study performed was somehow unfair and biased against the vape ratings? I'd love to get feedback on this, as somehow bottom-up ratings are more common to find in various media, yet I have not seen good scientific evidence of their validity. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.